President Foley, Speaker Hilgers, members of the legislature, distinguished guests, friends, my lovely wife, Suzanne, our First Lady. <laughs> Fellow Nebraskans, good morning. Congratulations on the commencement of the second session of the 107th Nebraska Legislature. Welcome back to Lincoln. I look forward to working together to serve Nebraskans during what is sure to be a fast-paced, short session. Eight years ago, I announced my run for governor. I did so out of a love for my state and a desire to see her thrive. Through the years, the guiding principle of my administration has remained the same, to grow Nebraska. And despite weathering, floods, fires, and a global pandemic, we have done just that. In the face of unprecedented challenges, the state of the state is strong. We've been living with COVID-19 for nearly two years now. It's changed the way we do business, educate, learn, and go about our daily lives. And in some tragic cases, it's taken lives. But true to our character, we have kept moving forward. The development of vaccines, boosters, and new treatments has given us the opportunity to return to the pursuit of the good life. Nebraskans don't need to be mandated to do the right thing. They just do it. Without lockdowns or mandates, businesses were able to stay open. Parents were able to return to work. And children were able to return to school. Where authoritarian states are struggling, we are thriving. Politico's state pandemic response scorecard confirms this. An in-depth, independent analysis of all 50 states shows that Nebraska weathered this storm better than any other state. We have the lowest unemployment rate in history, not only in the history of our state, but in the history of our nation at 1.8%. Last November marked the third month in a row where one million Nebraskans were employed. And our manufacturing sector has come roaring back. In fact, there are more Nebraskans working in manufacturing today than pre-pandemic. Our economic successes are a testament to Nebraskans' desire to work hard and earn from teachers to truck drivers, mechanics to medical professionals, from farmers to fast food workers, and every profession in between. The state's women and men invest their time and effort to better their communities and support their families. Last year, we supported their work and helped them grow Nebraska. Thanks to the leadership of Chairman Linehan, Chairwoman Linehan, sorry, and the Revenue Committee, the 2021 session ushered in a historic level of tax relief that will deliver $2 billion to Nebraskans over the next two years. Many other great bills were passed into law thanks to your hard work. Chairman Friesen, Speaker Hilgers, and the members of the Telecommunications and Transportation Committee were able to pass into law and secure passage of the Nebraska Rural Broadband Bridge Act, 
which will allow 30,000 Nebraskan households to access high-speed broadband. Senators Brewer and Gregory shepherded through legislation that fully exempts military retirement pay from state income tax. Reforms like these will help us hold on to our talented veterans in our state. All of this and more was accomplished while responsibly managing state spending and limiting expenditures to only 2.4% growth. Behind the numbers, we have seen intangible growth as well. Throughout Nebraska, our people's grit, drive, and selflessness was on full display in 2021. From North Omaha to North Platte, folks stepped up to solve problems in their communities. In North Omaha, business and community leaders have been working to develop and revitalize Omaha's historic North 24th Street. Through physical improvements, such as providing high-speed fiber optic upgrades and a comprehensive streetscape plan, the project's work promises to bring businesses and customers back to the area. In the home of famed Buffalo Bill Cody, North Platte, ranchers felt the squeeze that comes with a lack of options for meat processing. Instead of accepting the status quo, David Briggs and others launched Sustainable Beef, a beef processing company, to bring about the opportunity for ranchers to have more opportunities that will also provide 900 jobs to North Platte community and over a billion dollars in annual revenue. And more importantly, Nebraska's ranchers will have more options when they run their businesses. <laughs> Today I am joined by some of the people who are responsible for making these incredible efforts possible. North Omaha's Tar Carmen Tapio, who's the CEO of North End Teleservices. Pastor Ralph Flasseter, one of the leaders of the North 24th Street Business Improvement District, and David Briggs, CEO of Sustainable Beef. Please join me in welcoming them. Carmen, Pastor Ralph, and David, thank you for what you do to make our state better. Appreciate you so much being here. Other Nebraskans also stepped up in 2021. Over 200 men and women accepted the call to join the thin blue line that protects and serves our communities. They've earned their badge. They were trained, challenged, and tested thanks in part to the work of instructors at the Law Enforcement Training Center in Grand Island. We are joined here today by the Director of the Law Enforcement Training Center, Brenda Urbanic, and the Deputy Director, Mark Stevenson. They work hard to make sure our men and women in blue are prepared to respond to the unique challenges of their communities. Brenda and Mark, thank you for what you do for our state. Our students continue to personally prepare themselves to take the jobs we have in Nebraska. We enter 2022 with over 3,900 Nebraskans who are enrolled in registered apprenticeship programs throughout the state, including in our six great community colleges. That's 39 more Nebraskans who are pursuing growth and contributing to our diverse, skilled workforce. And Nebraska continues to serve as a beacon for life. 
This includes the amazing aid our crisis pregnancy centers and other organizations provide to new mothers and their babies. It also includes the work our people do for some of the most vulnerable in Nebraska, born and unborn. I specifically want to recognize Attorney General Doug Peterson and the work he does to combat human trafficking throughout our state. During his tenure, the state of Nebraska has prosecuted 76 sex trafficking crimes, holding accountable those who are exploiting the vulnerable and delivering justice for the citizens of the, uh, for the victims of this modern day form of slavery. Thank you, Attorney General Peterson, for your leadership to ensure that all Nebraskans can expect justice and equality under the law. We must also recognize the doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals whose stalwart selflessness and excellent care have helped us weather this pandemic. Please help me thank our health care heroes. We have come a long way in a year, but there is still much work left to be done. Work that will require everyone to pull together for our state and continue to allow us to thrive. This legislative session, there are four priorities that we must accomplish to keep Nebraska strong and growing for years to come. It's not likely to surprise many of you that I am going to start with tax relief. It's been a staple of my budget recommendations every year. I was elected on the promise that I would deliver tax relief for Nebraska. It's what the hardworking men and women of this state deserve. And given our current financial situation, we must deliver. Last year, we successfully passed a two-year budget that set the priorities for this year and next. While there are opportunities to fine-tune this budget, I expect that state agencies and our partners will continue to live within the budget and keep the growth of the budget to less than 3%. By the end of the fiscal year 2023, the state of Nebraska is anticipated to have an estimated $1.5 billion in its cash reserve fund. Let me say that again, $1.5 billion. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Folks, this is the people's money, and we must support tax relief that puts this money back into the pocket of the people. To start, we can take this session to build on the reforms from last session and accelerate the work on the Social Security taxes that was done last year and implement the exemption of those tax, Social Security tax exemptions to five years rather than the current 10-year period. This would allow our older neighbors and relatives and friends to be able to keep more of their hard-earned money. We also need to ensure that we are building upon the work that was done with regard to property tax relief that was provided during these last couple of years. This fiscal year and next, 
we will provide $548 million in property tax relief back to the people through LB 1107. And we must make sure it does not drop below this floor. <laughs> Finally, over the next five years, we must reduce, reduce the top individual income tax rate by 1%. From 6.4%, sorry, 6.84% to 5.84%. For those who may try to brand this as a tax cut for the rich, I challenge you to ask the Nebraskans making $33,180 a year or families making $66,320 a year if they feel rich. They make up some of the 418,900 Nebraskans in this tax bracket who deserve relief. And we can offer that relief while aligning the job creator taxes to this new reduced individual income tax rate as well. It's also imperative that we remember that our duty and responsibility to protect the public safety. After all, we need to remember, people are our greatest resource. There are several opportunities in this session to strengthen our commit to, commitment to keeping Nebraskans safe. Historic agreements were struck to provide substantial pay increases for our 24 by 7 public health and safety professions. This will help us attract and retain quality correctional teammates. We've already seen a five-fold increase in the number of applicants to the Department of Corrections since this announcement was made. I am also requesting $16.9 million to enhance our state crime lab, which analyzes forensic and physical criminal evidence to better secure justice for the victims of crime, and $47.7 million toward the expansion of the Law Enforcement Training Center in Grand Island. And finally, we must fully fund the modernization of the Nebraska State Penitentiary. The existing penitentiary was built over 150 years ago. Its walls are crumbling and its infrastructure is aged and beyond simple repair. For those wishing to pursue criminal justice reform, this should be a no-brainer. A modern correctional facility will give our inmates a better quality of life. Modernizing our state penitentiary will allow us to offer enhanced services and programming to prepare men there for life after time served. I am not asking anyone to choose between modernizing the state penitentiary and pursuing criminal justice reforms intent on reducing crime and recidivism. These solutions are not at odds. There is room for both as we work together to strengthen Nebraska. This year, we can also secure our water resources for generations to come. After all, water is Nebraska's greatest natural resource after our people. To secure Nebraska's water supply, I am recommending $500 million to construct a canal and reserve or a water reservoir system from the South Platte River. Access to this water enables our farmers and ranchers to produce. It provides for quality drinking water. It keeps electric generation cost manageable. And ensures Nebraska continues to be the best place in the world to live, work, and raise a family. If we fail to secure our water pot supply from the South Platte River, we could expect that over 90% of the water 
that comes to us from Colorado would be reduced. We must act to preserve, protect, manage, and steward our water supply for future Nebraskans. I am also requesting $200 million be allocated to the uh, projects presented by the Star Wars sub, uh, Special Committee. I am not going to try to explain Star Wars to you. I'll let the speaker do that. These projects will also secure our access to water. And they provide the additional promise to grow the good life in tourism and recreation. In addition, I am recommending $5 million for the Peru levy, $60 million to uh, restore and protect drinking water uh, supply systems in our rural areas, such as Cedar and Knox County, and $23 million in repairs for the Fort Laramie Gearing Canal, Canal Tunnel. This year, we also have the rare task of spending the $1 billion, $40 million that has been allocated to Nebraska through the American Rescue Plan Act. These ARPA dollars can help us and our state grow into the future. Today, I'm releasing a second budget recommendation with the proposals on how to spend this ARPA funding. And I look forward toward the robust debate that will ensue as you work to determine where best this money is going to be spent. I cannot stress it enough. ARPA dollars are one-time dollars. They must be spent as such. Each of us has a responsibility to guard against spending this money in a way that will grow government expenses. My proposal includes 29 qualifying projects, initiatives, that will better Nebraska. It will deliver nearly $200 million for public health emergency response. And for areas that experience negative economic impact from COVID-19, I'm requesting over $500 million. This includes assistance for economic development projects in North Omaha and funding for beef processing supply chain issues in North Platte. It secures funding for parents of low-income children who have experienced learning loss during the pandemic. And it provides Nebraska's community colleges with dollars to enhance their workforce development programs. It also funds behavioral health and nursing incentives to ensure continued access to quality care throughout our state. In addition to the ARPA budget uh, proposals, it also includes $284 million for water and sewer projects. This includes partial funding for the Perkins County Canal Reservoir construction, funding for the Star Wars Special uh, Committee pro proposals, and other key projects I've mentioned already here today. Putting back money into the people's pockets, protecting our public safety, securing access to our natural resources, investing, one -time, inv investing in one-time projects that will enhance our state. These are the ways that we can help Nebraska stay strong and growing in 2022. I know that there will be tough debates, long nights, and seemingly impossible time constraints. But I also know that we get things done when everyone rolls up their sleeves and works together. Thank you for your service to the people of Nebraska. Our work in the coming days will require a spirit of collaboration and cooperation and for each of us to do our part to keep Nebraska strong. I look forward to the challenge, opportunity, and honor of working with you. Remember, Nebraska is what America is supposed to be. 
God bless you all, and God bless the great state of Nebraska.